Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. And I'm Tom Scholey. Today we're going to be talking about your dad's favorite comic book character, <laughs> man. L- little Annie Fanny. But first, Jimmy and I are going to be doing some traveling. October 6th through 9th, we're going to CXE Columbus, Ohio uh, for a comic book festival. We're going to be at Baltimore Comic Con, the birthplace, the genesis point of Cartoonist Kayfabe, October 28th through 30th. Jimmy's going to be at uh, the Jacksonville Public Library October 22nd for a zine festival. Cartoonist Kayfabe Tober is going on this year as per usual, and these are your drawing prompts this go around. Can't wait to see what the Kayfabe audience comes up with for uh, each and every one of these uh, individual prompts. Hashtag us on Instagram, at us on Twitter to make sure that we can see everything, and we will try to uh, repost and reshare as much of that stuff as possible. Uh, with that upfront piece out of the way, let's take a look at some little Annie Fanny comics, man. Probably the height of, of magazine comic art mm-hmm. uh, in existence by Harvey Kurtzman and Will Elder with lots of extra hands uh, coming in to help William Stout, Frank Frazetta, Jack Davis, Russ Heath. There's glimpses of crumb that get touched uh, in some of these strips, man. And it is a tour de force. We know that Hugh Hefner... Was a big time comic book head, big time cartooning head, employed a lot, gave the best rates uh-huh. money could buy, man, for uh, illustration and single panel gags and things in the pages of Playboy. Mad devotee, Jack Cool guy, hook Harvey Kurtzman up. They tried, man, they tried. They did Trump Magazine. These are your contributing artists in the, the late run Jack Davis, Sarah Downs, Russ Heath, Larry Siegel, Bill Stout. Let's, let's start at the beginning, James. What's the, what's the date on, on this front one? 62 to 88. All right. Yeah, I think it's noteworthy. Just, I mean, 26-year run, yeah. you know, covering this stuff. One of the things I find really interesting about this work now, because I think if you're, if you're a Kurtzman fan, this work is kind of, I feel like, mixed the way it's received. Sure. Part of it is how worked it is. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think today where, you know, the black line is just not the only way to make comics anymore, it's yeah. interesting to go back and see this work thinking about it through the lens of comics today and how we treat color and how much we have access to in terms of creating they were doing some stuff the hard way oh yeah but definitely creating a look there that uh does not rely on that black line yet that so many comics did and i think that's intentional at the time to separate it from like that was a low product like a lo-fi production necessity Mm -hmm. the black line art if you're going to do high-end production like playboy magazine you can do this right and they would do maybe maybe for a year or something like that, man. Uh, you get a little over 200 pages worth of stuff, maybe closer to three. But that's not a lot of pages in, you know, 30 years, 40 years. So you said 1962. So this has to be before the death of Oh, Kennedy. definitely. They're not doing this. They're not tasteless. Yeah. yeah, like, that's a high-class magazine, man. You know, it's not an underground comic. Uh, but the, in terms of the satire, which is something that Kurtzman is always sort of known for... They were up to the minute, and as they get older, to me, uh, you know, I got that collection of Mad Magazine, and it, it, it wasn't that big of a deal when I was reading it as a kid. I was just like, whatever. But to me, it's so much more valuable to read like a 1990s Mad, knowing that it's people who are working on that comic, that magazine since the 70s, mm-hmm. because it really becomes like the old generation's thoughts right. on Game Boy, yeah, and. MC Hammer and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Like, so you're, you're already kind of getting a little bit of that with this because this is we're in the free love uh, generation and Kurtzman and Elder are already old cusses. I, I haven't read enough of this. Like, how is it as a reading experience? Like, it's, it's certainly like graphically very interesting, it, but you don't read, you don't read this book at once. <laughs> you know, it lends to a once in a while read in terms of each of these strips, because it is so one note, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's getting this, this, this character, you know, she, she's like, uh, who's that Rosemary's baby chick? Uh, Mia yeah, Farrow. Mia Farrow. I, yeah. I was going to say she's like little Amy Fanny, but she is little Amy <laughs> <laughs> Right. Yeah, totally. Russ Heath's signature on this particular story. Yeah. Check out the artist in, in uh, this, this early run, man. It's like Paul Coker Jr. We, we just lost him not too long ago. Frazetta, Heath, Jaffe, Bob Price, Arnold Roth, Larry Siegel. Some of these names you see in Humbug. I was going to say, like, that's something that I would uh, compare to in terms of reading experience because a lot of this stuff may be uh, reference of the time and more adult reference. And I don't just mean adult like like, uh, porn. I mean, like, adult like whatever would be the, the, Mm -hmm. yeah, politics, a great example, literature, things like that. 
so it is a dense experience, but also as you look at these panels, the density is not just in text, you know, like there was one uh, that you passed that was like art and you would see like every panel had paintings in it okay. going through like art history, uh, you know, super dense in the amount of information that is on these pages. And if you were to just sit down and be like, I'm going to read this book cover to cover, you're really cheating yourself out of sure. kind of like, you know, yes, you want to comb right. over this yeah. stuff, you know, like, like this kind of stuff. Kurtzman's lingering on all of these, you know, any, anytime you see a piece of text or an image in the background, it's something that, you know, has been thought about and cared for through three or four or five drafts. Mm -hmm. When you really scrutinize this work, you could, you could see like a Jack Davis pop in there yeah. and then it gets the Will Elder color treatment. Uh, Will Elder known for chicken fat, which is uh, to, to squeeze in uh, as many jokes per square inch as possible. So that is about the, you know, that's the density that we're looking at here. So that, I, I think I saw Goodman Beaver. Is he part of the continuity of, like I know Little Annie Fanny kind of grew out of Goodman Beaver creatively, but simply that. part of it. Yeah. No, yeah, simply that. Man, Goodman Beaver from, from Help Magazine uh, was a blonde uh, little, little uh, orphan Annie. Yeah, I'm betting they're going to deny a, a uh, Goodman Beaver being in these pages based on that history, but sure. And look at this, man. LBJ, Nixon, uh, Malcolm X, Chairman Miao, Muhammad, Muhammad Ali. Ali, all in one image. Can't yeah, be. Yeah, wow. And just speaking about the up to the minute. Yeah, like look at the amount of of imagery that they're loading this stuff with. Great cartoony faces too, which again, like if you spend the time lingering on these images, you will be rewarded for it in terms of the cartooning that... They're, they're certainly giving Hefner his money's worth. Yeah. Space race. That seems to be the inspiration of the, is, is like, this is art that's made when somebody's footing a hefty bill, you know, and wants to see the money they're spending on, on the product. Hugh Hefner wanted his money's worth, yeah. man. Uh, when in regards to the, the sort of overworking, yeah. look at that. Oh, here, let, let me just finish my thought before yeah. we, we, <laughs> get, we get to this stuff. But um, Kurtzman said that if we didn't make those changes on our own, Hugh Hefner was just going to do that anyhow. Mm -hmm. Like, he was paying the best rates. These are three, four um, page pieces that might have been getting $10,000 a page. Yeah. Like, at that high level mm -hmm. of a price. Because beyond just uh, beyond just the the commission for the artwork, they also got free trips out of the deal. Uh, mm -hmm. My, my uh, lettering teacher at the Kubert School is Phil Felix. And he lettered the back half of uh, Little Annie Fanny. And they went on Hawaiian trip. Like, Little Annie mm -hmm. Fanny goes Hawaiian. And, <laughs> and Hugh Hefner's paying the bill for that, that reference work that they're accumulating. Cartoonist Kayfabe is brought to you by the comic books that we make. On the stands right now, Jimmy has Street Angel, Deadliest Girl Alive, trade paperback, is back in reprint, collecting all of his image comics, Street Angel work, eight stories in total, and some stuff that you've not seen anywhere else. He also is, has Hulk Grand Design out in the wild. Two issues of the the floppy, Monster and Madness, but it's going to be getting that Treasury Edition format in early 2023, but put in your pre-orders right now. Speaking of Treasury Editions, Fantastic Four Grand Design and Jack Kirby Epic Life of the King of Comics is in stores today. That's Tom Scioli's latest works that you could get your hands on, but he's got his name on the spines of uh, many of books, man, so pop in the name into your Google machine, you're going to find his comics in big volume and be able to enjoy them that way. Red Room trigger warnings, Red Room the Anti-Social Network are on the stands as we speak. Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit. It's my latest project. Uh, I appreciate all the support you guys have given it, given it so far. And can't wait for you guys to see the next round of comics uh, with all of that out of the way. Now that we're done paying the bills, let's get back to the video. Uh, I had to stop on this because this is a strip that has Jack Davis and Frank Frazetta nice. helping out. And when you see something like this, you have to imagine that Frank Frazetta isn't doing preliminary artwork. Like that's, that's his color on there. Yeah. Wow. And uh, it was in complete crumb comics whenever crumb connected with Kurtzman and stuff and was playing around with being an assistant on this material where I first learned that, that Frank Frazetta helped on Annie Fanny. And he said that, they got Frazetta out of there quick because he was painting veins and stuff like under her titties. And they're just like, it's, it's not, <laughs> that's not what we're going for. That, that one little panel, it's like such a Frazetta moment totally. like in this, you know. Yeah, that lighting pops too. Yeah. That color palette and everything feels like it's a little bit different. It's interesting with these because I don't know how 
how positive everybody felt about them that was involved with it. Right. But you think of Kurtzman doing things like Humbug, where he's trying to do an, more adult sensibilities mm -hmm. in terms of humor. This is a good vehicle for that. Yeah. You know, because it is clearly an, an adult audience that's able to consume this. Wow. Look Whoa. at that. Uh, again, to op art. And the Beatles. E, the Bleedles. I, I love whenever these old guys do the Beatles because, like, they just don't get it. They're like, oh, they're greasy hair. Boy, just the beauty of some of these illustrations. Classical approach, man. Yeah, it's astounding. You can see why there's a couple of pages in, in a story, you know, uh, a lot of work for a month or two. I mean, that's like the Jack Davis creepy mm -hmm. one cover. It really is. You know, you, like you see him popping up and, and the most important piece is the continuity of keeping Annie Fanny consistent with that Mondrian mm -hmm. uh, dress. And, you know, can, I, can you trust Jack Davis to show up and create something solid right there? All of these Sopolins are clearly Jack Davis. Man, incredible. Like the motion on top of the, the cartooning. Yes. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Wow. You know, this is what I'm talking about. Like, if you study this image, you're going to get jokes per square mm -hmm. inch all over this two-page spread. Psychoanalysis convention. <laughs> I would bet that this this was printed in an August issue. Wow, look at that effect. Getting into Garbage Pail Kid. Territory. You know what? I've seen a couple images that really feel like Garbage Pail Kids. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, Bob Dylan. That's the stuff, too, is, you know, so much of this may be lost to time for somebody that's yeah. of a certain age. Yeah. And, I mean, like, putting a Lichtenstein right in there, right? Lichtenstein, pop art, and weaving the Marvel Comics, pop art comics into the mixture. Yeah, so you can see the ingredients here. You know, this is Kurtzman being Kurtzman. Look at that, mm -hmm. dude. Crazy cat. And, you know, that's, that's like, a pill in the Hefner. Oh, yeah, it's appealing. Who, who isn't it appealing to? And then you combine it with those onomatopoeias. Beautiful. That's a great panel, too. We've seen so many of these two-thirds page splashes. That's a pretty nice variation. Love it. The cool thing about these volumes, too, skip ahead a bit, yeah. is the back matter right. where we get a lot of process. Yes. It is such valuable information. Origins of Little Annie Fanny by Dennis Kitchen. Uh, and here we have, like, uh, examples of what goes into each of these pages, man? Like, these are not pages that are ill-conceived. If you're going to spend that much time on the final render, you better get everything in order. Right. And the reason you do it is you can't re-render the end result. Like, no. that stuff needs to be ironed down before you go into the paint and the color and stuff that would just make it impossible to make it look good if you're changing. So his process, Harvey Kurtzman, uh, is a process that he refined over a period of decades, man, like with the war books. And it's a process that got adopted by others, like Art Spiegelman, I think, works in the, in the same fashion, where it becomes a function of ha having adding um, overlays and using different yeah. color markers mm -hmm. to uh, show you what the new edits are. And you might have five or six different pieces of overlay. We saw some of those at the Billy Ireland. Yes. With all the pieces and stuff. Oh, man. And, like, the very early layouts, these are so classic, and they're in that uh, Kurtzman monograph. Yeah. You can see some more examples of that stuff. But it is interesting to see it develop out that way. Yeah. Classic Kurtzman kind of approach, right? Just all gestural, rubbery. And for those playing at home that don't know who Ernie Kovacs is or something uh -huh. like that, each of the strips has a little bit of annotations to hip you up to some of the things that you're seeing Smart on the... Uh, on the page there. Look at that. False start. Wow. Yeah. Sergeant imagine Pepper. doing all that and then starting all over. <laughs> That's incredible. I love seeing that stuff, though, to see, like, where do you start? You know, yes. like, completely rendered faces in the middle of a, of a pencil rough drawing. Jim, I could see you doing that in one of your comics, have a page that's, like, deliberately, like, partially rendered, partially not. Let's jump. I like that idea. Yeah. yeah. Let's jump closer to the 80s, which is more our era. Yeah, we might and actually get a and, reference. And see you with, with some of these... Uh, <laughs> That is a long run. It really is. And, and rigorous work throughout yeah. that run. And she she maintains, like, if this is approaching the, the 80s, she still looks Arnold. like Joey Heatherton type chick or something. Hard to change that part, right? I guess. 
It'd be funny if that were a gag of like if they changed, updated her look, and it was some plastic surgery <laughs> <laughs> so, story. So uh, yeah, so I guess bodybuilding is in yeah. vogue at yeah, this moment. Yeah, pumping iron. Yeah, the Jet Age. I saw a porn shop in the background of one of those. Yeah, so I'm like, look at this stuff, man. Jeez. W- when's she gonna go to a video arcade? Getting I don't... into jogging and running. Yeah. <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> I saw the Tin Man back there. <laughs> there is a WWF one. We should see that one, right, Jimmy? Yeah, absolutely. When we get out of here. How about this? This is a break from what we've seen so far. I love whenever you see some kind of innovation that he's able to bring in after, I don't know, 20 years into it. Right. Well, just regular cartooning really stands out in this context. It's a straight-up family circus. Inset panel there. Very nice. Saw some John Travolta staying alive shit. I don't think I have this second volume, and I'm I'm kind of jealous. Like, wow, look at the density of that page. Oh, yeah. How many? There must be 150 characters on that page. Yeah. Yeah, it's wild, man. And, and by the way, at this point, it's Elder and Kurtzman. There ain't no help. Uh-huh. wonder how involved, like, is, is Hefner involved all the way through? You know, at some point, does he kind of lose interest and let these guys do what they want? Yeah, the computer age. Mm-hmm. Always funny when you see a computer screen, like, in, uh, with, back in the with day. With ASCII art. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, too, when you think about computers and porn. <laughs> because, like, th- like this Spot was the start. On. Yeah, like, sure. Like, I'm sure like, the first ASCII, and stuff. <laughs> ASCII image was, like, pornography. <laughs> Sensory deprivation tanks? <laughs> I think that's a Hooters reference. Knockers. I do, I do. It'd be a shame not to see the wrestling one. I mean, we got to be moving towards it. Yeah, I'd be coming in probably with like a WrestleMania. Absolutely. Wow. Sideways. How about that? Wow. What a spread. Indiana Jones <laughs> <laughs> with Spielberg. At a thirty-minute workout. This looks like a Mad Magazine mm-hmm. article. Yeah, the page a strange count, piece. The page count's lowering. Three, three, <gasps> three pagers. It lowers in the beginning. Yeah. The beginning, there are like one and two pagers. This, does Frazetta with. show up in that one? I saw like a cool signature here. Oh, with apologies. Oh, oh yeah, because apologies. that's the composition yes. from one of the Conan's covers. Yeah, they probably just that's copied excellent. and paste. There it is. So, dude, how about that? Like, that Arnold shit way back then is, like, probably from the 70s yeah. before, before I, when he was just Mr. Olympia. Right. right, you're really seeing, like, the years fly by through here. Ed Koch, Grace Jones. Oh, here's your, this is your wrestling yeah. joint. Yeah. <laughs> and, dude, it is the era of, like, Corporal Kirshner and, like, and, like, uh, you know, Iran number one. Russia number one. Hunk America. Hulk two. Hunk Hokum and the Iron Schmuck. <laughs> <laughs> Dude with a camel clutch. They're they're thorough. There's a better example of how they put the pages together with uh yeah, from, can, from start to finish back here. See those color overlays that you were talking about. Yeah. Body proportions. Talk about notes starting that the release. Um, very hard for anybody else to understand. <laughs> you know, like the rough uh, layout for this page. Yeah. They Impossible. literally. Imagine a thumbnail of that. It's just scribbles. I mean, I've seen uh, Kurtzman uh, layouts, and I've never seen ones as intricate as these. Yeah, for sure. These guys have been. Uh, I think they went to high school together, so they have a very long-standing relationship, and I think have access to each other. So could just like hit each other up on the phone. And handle business as needed. Yeah, working out jokes and material. Oh, oh, this is a joke. Two, two vampire. <laughs> Will others that kind of dude? Man. <laughs> That's a good uh, finished versus your. Yeah, where you want to say rough? Place. Like it's a layout, yeah. but but it goes deeper. See, here's your layouts with like two mm-hmm. levels of uh-huh. jokes and stuff added. I like seeing him drawing on uh, lined paper and on gridded paper. From the store. I've seen people bring that up, like, where does that stuff exist? And it was like, that was pre-printed. Like, you you had that stuff. Cartooning was a legitimate thing that enough people participated in that, you know, I mean, it goes back, you see it in the EC art reprints, where it's like some of that stuff's pre-ruled. And then later on, when when Kurtzman's doing the Jungle Book and things, like, you, you see that, and it's, you know, it's a, it's a chemical technology, It's and it's the same tools that create graph paper. It's the same blue line mm-hmm. that 
you know, they pre pre print stuff. And now we're at that place where we could print our own, man. Yeah, there's crossover back then too for drafting tools. There is, so yeah. Stuff with the horizontal lines could easily be used in drafting industry where lettering is so consistent. The color well. rough. How about that? Yeah. Yeah, working everything out. Man, like this. How are you making sense of this? Oh, I know. I guess we're looking at multiple overlays, so you could kind of like that peel them apart it. and then make sense of and it. And as far as I can recall, uh, Phil Felix had had a page or two, and he's had a lot of roughs. He had, he did have some roughs and things that I was able to check out. Uh, it would be like Crescent Artboard, the, the thick illustration mm -hmm. board that these things would be uh, printed on. So uh, it's not even like you're light boxing. You would have to use probably like a carbon paper to trace off this stuff to get uh, your your pages oriented correctly to the way you want it. And here you see the refinement of like rough and then tightening things up further. But here's the thing too, with all these levels of revision and, and, and craft and process that goes into it, none of this feels stiff. Right. You know, it, it all feels good. And then you get your last little bit of annotations to tell you what the hell you're looking at. Bobby Fisher. I feel very lucky that we have this kind of record of Kurtzman. Yeah. Because, like, we have finished comics by him. We do. And they are so different than what you see with this version of finished comics. Right. Yeah, so we looked at a giant overview back in the day with uh, Little Annie Fanny, Penthouse Comics. Honey Hustler. Hustler Comics. Decided to go micro today with uh, Little Annie Fanny in specific. You guys good to go? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, favors, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. Jimmy, let the people know what's out there, man. Street Angel, Deadly Squirrel Live is back in print after almost a year from Image Comics. Eight full-color stories. Pick that up in time for Christmas. Perfect gift for any fan of superheroes, action, skateboarding, etc. And Hulk Grand Design Monster Madness. Both issues are available at fine comic shops throughout the land, at least while supplies last. And there will be an oversized treasury edition uh, collected and released first of 2023. So pre-order that book now. Get those numbers up. A lot of people ask what the next Grand Design book is. We got to sell some Hulk Grand Design so that Marvel knows it's worth their time to do another Grand Design. So get those orders up on the Hulk Grand Design and uh, join me on patreon.com slash jimrug to see a lot more of my comics and art. And speaking of Grand Design, we got Fantastic Four Grand Design and Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics. And uh, check out my YouTube channel, Total Recall Show. And every Thursday, I do a new issue of Thor, do a commentary on each issue of Thor. And uh, check out my Patreon. Go to patreon.com, search Tom Scholey. And uh, do ink it, it, for this uh, month of October, uh, there's Jacktober, a series of drawing prompts for every day of the month, uh, all Kirby related drawing prompts. Red Room trigger warnings and anti-social network are on the stands as we speak. Murder on the dark web for fun and profit. Each book completely self-contained. And uh, you can get your hands on these comics at my link tree in the description below this video. Thank you guys so much for supporting it the way you've been. And if you want to read future Red Room comics that haven't hit paper yet, go to my Patreon. Patreon.com slash edpiscor. Three bucks will get you the archive there. And uh, you can read all of this material and the new stuff before it hits paper. Jimmy, what else do we have out there? Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts, merchandise, fanny packs, and more at our spread shop at the links below this video. Another great way to support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel, given those marching orders will be on our way. Make more comics.